If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's so already says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be a part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive a review. Positive <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. As you can see here, it's the different Sky Stream because these are bands from all over the world, dear listener, all over the globe. So they have different skies. Shout out to Lisa Fernandez. Okay. <laughs> All right. Gorn Guts. Colored Sands, to my knowledge, is what we have up next. <laughs> Colored Sands indeed, dear listener. Representing listeners. both Quebec and Tibet. The avant-garde death metal band Gorgut's album Colored Sands focuses on the history of Tibet between the death of the 13th Dalai Lama through the upbringing of the current one. Through invasion and cultural war. I'm sorry, guys. I have a very funny story in my head. I'm not going to share. But we had a situation. Funny... We had a situation <laughs> with one of our kids and their, and their mom. Uh, and uh, and it was a little silly. <laughs> we've said a million times, don't call us unless there's an emergency. And <laughs> the situation happened. And it was weird, but it wasn't an emergency. <laughs> it was weird. It was nasty, but it wasn't an emergency. Shout out! Shout out to the big homie. <laughs> The upbringing of the current one through invasion. I'm almost certain he did that shit just to. Anyway, we continue. Cal, hit me on but the text. But babe, I'll this tell is the later. thing that I think about when you say, We're you know, doomed. that person wants to get outside of that, the box that they're in. But it's like, yo, I mean, well, I understand, but I understand where we're coming from. <laughs> the okay, I'm sorry, I'm gonna focus. <laughs> Because it's, it's not a funny thing that I'm reading. I'm, I just read Invasion. All right. Uh, okay. From the death of the Dalai Lama through the upbringing of the current one, through invasion and cultural warfare from the Chinese up through modern day. The title track is a departure from the storytelling to focus on sacred practice that means a lot to me, personally, as a follower of Tibetan Buddhism. Who's this? Oh, Negative Vibes. Shout out to Negative Vibes. Uh, the creation and destruction of a sand mandala which is meant as a practice of patient dedication and a beautiful reminder of the impermanence of life. Oh, wow. I've never seen that. They must, do they have that on YouTube? A sand mandala? Well, they created the practice of patient dedication. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The creation and destruction of it. So they create it and then they destroy it to show um, it, it's meant as a practice of patient dedication and a beautiful reminder of the impermanence of life. Uh -huh. That is really interesting, and I definitely would like to see that. Wow! Oh so they, wow! They make Holy this shit! Beautiful. Okay, so this is this is a uh, this is a sand mandala. I want to show you guys this wow. because I I just think it's uh, that's I think unbelievable. You, this is the one you should put right. This is what all those people. Oh working yeah. On okay. It? I I want to show you guys the sand mandala because. 
I don't want to just do the song. Like, you guys know how we are. Like, yeah, we do the song, but... If people take the time to do the... I hope this doesn't bother anybody. But if people take the time to, to you know, to do this, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to... I want to take a little bit of extra time. So this is what a sand mandala is. And it looks like everybody here is, like, working on doing it. Oh, my god! That looks really painstaking. Like, look at those details. They they make it just to destroy it. They put all that time and effort in there, and then they just destroy it afterwards? See, that's... I don't know how long they wait. I'm going to watch a YouTube video on this after. Um, that's, that's very fascinating. really fascinating. If, if, neg if negative vibes, like, throughout the song, maybe you can post some stuff on, uh, post some stuff on it, I and, uh, like we'll put it in there so people have the, even more context. The art of discipline is kind of lost in our culture. Like, there's not, like, a lot, everything is fast, and everything is now, and everything is mine, so we don't understand the, like, the beauty and pain. Like, obviously, there's, there's pain that doesn't bring, um that doesn't bring good from it. Like, you know, if somebody is self afflicting themselves or hurt, you know, self harm, I don't think that that brings about any good, but the idea of, you know, like, like a mother knows that, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're carrying the kid, you're uncomfortable. And then the other kid wants to be up on you. And so you're even more uncomfortable than the third kid. You're like there's a certain, you sacrifice for, right. for what you're doing. So I think that there, it is in our culture a little bit, but there's a lot of stuff that we, we will sacrifice really important things because we don't want to accept the pain that goes along with it. So let's Talking check it out. Abortion. Gorguts. Yeah. Oh, oh, talk that shit. Gorguts colored sand. Let's do this shit. Oh, Samsara, that movie, right? Where it's just going through like human life all over the world, but there's no dialogue. You know, I rented, I, I, I put that in my reserve list. I was like, I, I showed it to you like a year ago. You're like, ah. Oh, I might be more ready now. I'm glad yeah. you waited. Okay, let's check it out. I would have fallen asleep before, probably. Gorguts, let's do it. Look at that. You sound like Reza. Look at that. That's a cool. Look at that. Oh wow. And then a hand that here, and that looks like that looks like the. Thing. Interesting. That's kind of like. I'll show you the Christian version. Of it.
Yeah. There it goes. Uh, Samsara. That's right. We're not doing an album review. <laughs> this would be such an interesting record to do an album uh-huh. review from. Do you still need the AC on, by the way? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think you can turn it off. Okay, we'll take care of it after. Okay. All right. So that was uh, the wow. big homies, Gore Guts. Okay. I have to say, I love the album art. Um, really, really cool. I think that uh, this song was really interesting. So I, I heard like this sort of sludgy, so, sort of doomy sound underneath mm-hmm. um, that kind of like really like grounded you. And there, there's certain things that are like super satisfying. Like, I don't know, like those videos that they have where there people are like, Cutting soap, soap cutting and ones. stuff like that. It's a very satisfying sound. The ASMR, and or whatever that what is. They, yeah, what the th- stuff looks like. I just find it extremely satisfying. Um, and the the sound that they had underneath that sort of doomy sound, it was very. It had a sort of like complete, like it had a perfect amount of push to it. I, it was very, very. I thought yeah, it was very tone, well done. That tone was so perfect. Like, yeah, yeah. It it's, was just it's one of the things that frustrates me so much. When I'm trying to write music, I'm never forget that interview we did with that guy. He's a producer, and he said, "Look, man," he said, uh, "metal producers are the best producers in the world because what you guys give us is noise." And he's and he said it's literally noise, like you 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 pull the notes out of all the distortion, and you have to cut things out. So it's it's just unbelievable what these guys are able to do. But it's so frustrating when you have something in your head. Mm. Like I've got something, and, and, you know. Like you know, we're gonna we're gonna put the capital toward. I mean, we've already you know. Did you already send it off to the producer? Yeah. We, and uh, what did she say? Version. Well, she's she's got an entire line of people that. Oh, okay. You know, so you don't know yet. You know they're. You don't know yet. Um. Okay. So like. I know it's going to get there, but it, but like for the way that they had that tone with that main riff, that was insane. Man. Cause it just, it, it just, it was so large. It's like it encompassed the entire world, but yeah. Um, I really, really, really love what they did with the guitar work. I felt like I was hearing, you know, the doom or sort of, sort of a sludgy undertones. And then some of it sounded like industrial to me. Yeah. And then there was like that weird sound at the end that almost sounded like a horse. But yeah, something as I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I thought I thought that that um, I thought that that's why it was such a jolt when the song ended because I was like, oh, we're going to another part here, yeah, yeah. and then it just ended, which makes a lot of sense. But yeah, <laughs> considering the you know Man, the entire concept of the mandala and all the rest of it, the wheel of time is a symbol of the serpent eating its tail. I think I'm not sure. Um, so what do you think about that whole concept of, of creating something so beautiful and then destroying it? Well, I, I said before, I think that because could could I do that? <laughs> no, I don't believe I have that discipline. Um, because even in, in the smaller, simpler things, like the room got cleaned and now it's a fucking mess again, like that bugs me. You know, so I, I don't know if I could spend that. You can tell that's a lot of time that they're putting in on it just to have it be destroyed. But I love that there's so much meaning behind it. It's not like, like when, when meaning is poured into something, it really, it really what helps. Is, like, what is the meaning? Oh, they said that it, they do it to right here. It's meant as a practice of patient dedication and a beautiful reminder of the impermanence of life. So you put all this into it, but life is not permanent and it's going to go away. So it, it's like a reminder for them. But to put so much time into one simple reminder, like I remember one time, like I, I would spend so much time mowing the lawn. I always enjoyed it, though. I loved like beautifying the land and making everything look even. Um, and taking the time, even if it took longer, to make sure that the lines stayed even instead of like, you could, it would take less time to just, just cut it, man. Um, but I liked yeah. the even patterns of the lines. And I remember one time you said like that, 
that was the job that God gave Adam was for them to, to keep the land. And so we're supposed to beautify the land. And so, like, I mean, it wasn't a big giant conversation that you had, but every single time after that, that I mowed the lawn, even to this day, I was picking up our yard for whatever reason, everybody's trash blows into our yard. It's like unfreaking real. And there's a whole line of people's apartments. I don't know why it's on ours. Um, but I went and I was cleaning up all that trash and, um, I was thinking about that, that you said years ago. So I yeah. could see how, you know, and, and I think for kids to be able to see like these adults going through all of this work just to break it after, to explain that, you know, life and to have those discussions about life. I just think that that's a really, really cool addition to their culture. And, um, I personally would like I feel like you could come up with a lot of great practices if you, you know, took the time to do that. I would never come up with a practice like this, though. <laughs> Why? Because I don't believe that life is impermanent. Oh, okay, well... Okay, but I was saying you would have practices that go along with your belief system, but go on to this thing. What You, you don't believe that life is imper... You believe that life is permanent because... I mean, how could I believe it's... Imp I'm a Christian. Well, we're going to die. What does that mean? We're going to go to sleep. Right? We sleep. Yeah. You know, Jesus didn't say y'all gonna die. He said, you, you know. Yeah, but don't they believe Lazarus, in a version of coming back also? I think you, I think in Buddhism, it's you, you keep coming back or whatever it is until you reach enlightenment. And then that's it. So when they it's, say Nirvana is nothingness. I think. Because like being trapped in this life cycle is a trap. You're trying to escape. It's, it's what I got that, that the circle the the reincarnation is not necessarily a good thing like you're trying to it's you're trying to get out of the cycle of reincarnation that's nirvana so you you've reached like complete enlightenment so you're you're yeah you it says right there you don't exist so obviously as a Christian I, I don't believe I don't believe that life is impermanent yeah, I believe I, you go to another stage of consciousness in a in another dimension. Yeah, but I don't know if it's talking about like life as a whole and your death, or if it's talking about that life itself and the cycles that you go through. It's not permanent. Life changes, things change, and you can spend a lot of time building something that that can you know not be there. Yeah, but the, the goal day. is nirvana, is to get out of the cycle. You see what I'm saying? Like the, the their goal is to get out of the cycle of birth and and rebirth and 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 get out of there into nirvana. Yeah. So to me, that's ultimately what they're what they're trying to do here is that this thing it's very beautiful it's for a time, and then it goes out. I'm not saying it's not beautiful. I'm not saying it's not a beautiful ritual. I'm just saying, from a, from my vantage point, and it's very interesting considering the way that Christianity has dealt with art. Like, we've put a really big primer on art um, and that art must be preserved and things like that, especially during the medieval period and, and in the we used to. Enlightenment and post-Enlightenment era. Um, we used to. You know, Michelangelo's David, the Sistine Chapel, all that stuff. I don't know like, what happened. Why, we, do we, why are we producing such whack stuff now? Well, I don't know like that... It's been in our history to do next-level stuff that lasts and stands yeah. the test of time. And now we get people throwing out... So you say it all the time. Well, why I, aren't the Christians producing some of this stuff? I, I think that you know there there's there's a lot to go with that. Yeah, we'll get with that in a second. I'm just saying like the if I if I was a Buddhist like absolutely like this is this is uh, absolutely like completely. But obviously as a Christian, I don't like you you believe life is impermanent. Well, like the whole thing is about eternal life. How can you say yeah, he who believes has eternal life? Principle? Because, you, okay. like I said, you're looking at it like this is about like the ending of it, and that it's you know that I'm looking at it as life and its cycles. There's something is not permanent. So, for instance, you know you could build, you could spend a lot of time building a marriage that all of a sudden ends. It's not permanent. You're not guaranteed that stuff isn't going to change. And life changes and things change. And, you know, like parents, you spend years raising your kids and then they move out. You know, like you you could, there's lots of things in life that I, you know. 
So that's the I'm looking at like the the experiences within a lifetime that nothing is permanent and you can build to beautify something and that thing can then get broken or it can get lost or it can get whatever but it doesn't mean that you quit it's like this is this is part of life part of life is cycles and balance and finding so I'm not looking at it as the end of your life because yeah I believe that we have life after death and so in that sense Negative says, impermanence is understood in Buddhist theology to be pervasive in everything. The root of suffering is about trying to grasp things that we can't have or can't keep. So that's in, within your lifetime. Well, the whole goal of, of that is to get out of your lifetime. The entire goal of the entire theology is to get out of life. So I think impermanence... I'm, I'm getting from the little that I know of Buddhist ideology or theology. I'm only saying ideology because not all Buddhists are theists. But if the goal is to achieve nothingness, that means that you want to divest your, the root, in, in his mind, the root of suffering comes from desires. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that. so you, you're trying to, so that's why it says, like, you, you suffer so much because every desire you have is, is impermanent and you're trying to grasp and hold on to it. And so, in my mind, that's the point of that discipline, is to put all that work into something, enjoy its beauty, and then you're the one that says, yep, and I'm going to dash all this away because none of this shit, I can't, none of it is permanent. Oh, I see, yeah. So, joy itself is impermanent. Like, yep. the goal is not eternal joy. The goal is eternal nothing. So, that's what the ritual, to me, is about. Ultimately, it's, it's about being able to say... I am going to invest so much of myself in this and then it's a way of sort of blunting the the instrument within you that is desiring all that beauty and symmetry and 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 enjoyment of the fruits of your labor. So mm -hmm. it's like putting it's 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 putting your 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 whole soul into something and then getting rid of it and realizing that your attachment to that work is in itself something to be avoided. Right? So that's what I'm saying. Like for, for me, like obviously I see the beauty in that. And I in, in from that worldview, that ritual is extremely consistent with the overarching presupposition in much the same way that communion mm -hmm. is 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 completely aligned with a Christian ideology. Paul says, as long as you eat, uh, eat the bread and drink the cup, you, pro you proclaim the Lord's death. Until he comes, mm -hmm. which how can he come if he died? Well, he rose from the dead. So, so in communion, you have the death and resurrection of Christ, which if you really sit and break it down from a Christian angle, is the entire story of history being repeated itself over and over again. So, and, and there's a lot of depth to it because, you know, uh, wine is a fermented grape, you know, mm -hmm. wheat, you know, there's a lot of death coming into life and, and and the tr I was listening to a priest on the Lex Friedman show yesterday and, and I have my relationship to God has increased so much by my my uh, looking into science and looking at oh, yeah. especially the discussion surrounding consciousness and yeah. if we don't know how you get consciousness from dead matter which is obviously impossible in my view um then consciousness itself is fundamental to, to reality and all this other stuff here are projections or whatever you want to call them. And so that has implications to me on the things that we call art and the things that we call beauty and the, and, and the ability to, to, to rearrange aspects of the physical world into something that is like, look, if you just, if I, if I just applied raw science to this, to this picture, right? It's like, it's you got a bunch of clumps of matter, which are these people, collecting other clumps of matter and organizing them in some sort of pattern. Mm -hmm. Like that's the raw scientific. Well, now I shouldn't say scientific. That's the materialist understanding of what we're seeing here. Mm -hmm. So the materialists are going to say, "Yep, the, these are just clumps of matter that are being controlled by a brain," which. They don't really know who's controlling the brain, but the brain, they they think the brain and the mind are the exact same thing. 
And so you're not really choosing to do anything. You're just clumps of matter. And then you've got these clumps of matter that are organizing other clumps of matter to make this beautiful thing. And then they throw it in there. Like, obviously something else is happening here. Yeah. Like, something really deep is happening in this moment. Yeah. And there is a sense in which these guys are all operating as individuals. Like, you look at the degree of focus and precision these yeah. guys are operating in. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there, there's something else going on with us as in the human family. Yeah. Like, and, and because it's... Because they're a team, but yet they're individuals over there. Yeah, and, and, they're, and uh, again, they're doing something incredibly complex and beautiful, and then they're destroying something incredibly complex and beautiful. And that in itself, in my mind, probably has more meaning to it than the, the, than the, the, the act of doing the art itself. Of course, you can't divorce the two. I do think that there is something beautiful about, especially with art, like now that, you know, I guess I'm an artist, but like now that I'm like playing music and like really seriously trying to organize it into songs and, and the amount of time and effort it takes to, to, I mean, to get good, to warm up, you know, like to, to just practically go and make sure the chords are working, make sure your guitar is in tune, like everything that you have to do, taking care of your instrument, settings on an amp, everything that you have to do to produce that three and a half minutes of whatever it is, to take that and then destroy it, I don't know how that would work, like delete the file and like delete the file in my mind of how to replay that song. That would take an incredible amount. There, there would have to be some really higher principle to get me to do that because the art is so the the art I, I was talking about this with Perkinos. Like I feel like there there are I don't believe that any of this physical world stuff is actually really there. Like that's that's kind of where I'm at. Especially after rereading, you know, going through Hoffman's book the third time and like looking at Catania's math. Because he, you know, he's got a mathematical formula that's pretty complex. But after that I really don't. I don't believe in uh, object permanence. So, so then, if you don't believe in object permanence, and you really don't believe that material uh, uh, exists outside of mentation, then it it has even more implications that our minds and our our souls, whatever you want to call it, are organizing these projections that we call the physical world into something because when you have that view everything then is just an icon everything is a symbol of some some mm -hmm. other other reality mm -hmm. and so like what is the symbolism here um when these uh you know these conscious these consciousnesses that are organized this way i'm talking about these three guys there is so much symbolism here that I could spend probably five hours, five days straight talking about this thing because it's so fascinating to me if all of the world is mentation, this is incredible. Like what these guys, like aside from, you know, whether or not I agree with them theologically, what's happening here is like extremely sacred and extremely, it's like, I'm so drawn to this picture at the same time I feel like I'm like intruding on in someone's bedroom like this is such a sacred moment that these guys are doing this and I am not you know it's like I don't know if all of us understand the impact of everything that we do like these guys are lost in the work I'm you know I'm sure at some level in their consciousness they understand that somebody's taking a picture of them but these guys had no idea that we were going to have this conversation mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like the depth of, of what we do, even we don't understand how deep it is what we're actually doing. Yeah. Um, so that's the thing that, that blows my mind about, you know. And, you know, I, obviously I've done a lot of, of, of work on Islam and things like that. And, you know, really trying to understand uh, the Muslim faith because all, all my friends are, you know, Islamic. And I kind of needed to have some Islamics under my belt you know, for whatever reason, but I'm, I'm actually intrigued by this Buddhism thing because a lot of my atheist friends are now are, are, uh, are adopting Buddhist 
you know, philosophy. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think that that's really, it's, it's very, you know, obviously Sam Harris is a big thought leader and, and he's, I don't know if he, if he calls himself a Buddhist, but he makes a lot of references to Buddhism that, that, that show that, that we were listening to where he was talking about the self versus the person that guy had, had basically parachuted in and studied for years with Buddhists before he wrote that book. Mm. And so it, it is, it is a very fascinating thing to me. And I'm not certain what the correlation is between, you know, uh, the new new atheism because you know we, we you had the atheist resurgence with richard dawkins and sam harris was part of it but it was this you know internet bullshit ah you dumb you dumb theist blah 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 mm. and it, you know it's ridiculous you know 98 percent of those people i've tried i've tried to have conversations with them about basic stuff scientifically speaking they don't even know what they're talking about but that kind of atheism has died a very quick death and it's 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 to me, it seems like there's still that yearning within the human soul for a form of spirituality. I was very surprised uh, yeah. to hear Sam Harris talk about spirituality. And he doesn't need to qualify what he means by that because everybody knows he's a big atheist, whatever, whatever. But it's clear he talks about meditation and things like that. Um, and look, when I when I say the word spirit, I, 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 I use that terminology. Nobody knows what the hell a spirit is. Nobody knows what we're talking about. I feel God or whoever just uses that as a placeholder to describe, in my view, another dimension of reality. Mm -hmm. So I do believe that in 10,000 years, we will be able to define what spirit is in intelligible language and have instruments to measure really? what a spirit is you think so? from that dimension. Because hmm. again, I believe that... that that these are consciousnesses that are operating in other dimensions that we're not privy to. Mm -hmm. And this is something that, you know, any physicist, whatever, people talk about multi-dimensions all the time. Some say four, some say six, some say ten. So it's like, okay, if, if there is an... I, and then we're talking about whole multiverses. You know, people talk about multiverse theories and things like that. Like, they do a lot of things to, like, avoid yeah. the, ne the yeah. necessary being is, yeah. is, is, you know, as, you know, uh, Stephen says, you know, it's, it's you just do your, you know, uh, technically a multiverse is a supernatural um, claim because nature is what's in this known universe. So mm -hmm. if you're saying that there is a existence outside of this universe by definition that is supernatural so like the gap between what we're saying and what they're saying is is closing in and so when i hear the term spirit or spiritual whether i hear sam harris use it or a christian pastor use it to me we're talking about conscious experiences in other dimensions mm -hmm. and interfacing with those consciousnesses from this dimension and i believe that what we're calling like physicality there are certain things that function as gateways or invitation portals for those other dimensions to meld with this dimension. And I think that's the whole point of ritual. Ritual is a way of organizing um, matter. Oh, that's interesting. Right? Ritual yeah. is a form of organizing matter. And I'm saying matter like this because I don't believe in object permanence. I don't believe that any of this shit is actually independent of mentation. So what we're doing mm. is... We are concentrating our, our minds in such a way as to access those other dimensions. And so whether you're talking about DMT or going into a super meditative state where you hit those points where people, you know, brain scans, the activity looks very similar. Although your brain activity actually decreases when you're on DMT. Mm -hmm. And people are having all these, you know, all these people are, oh, Consciousness, that's it's all the brain. Okay, well explain that. Mm -hmm. Like your, your your brain activity actually decreases significantly yeah. and you're having these insane experiences. Whatever yeah. people want to say. Like these things are us intending to access that other dimension. Yeah. And it signals to those to those consciousnesses, hey, I wanna have some interface. And so when people talk about spiritual experiences or when Sam Harris talks about meditation, I am certain that he has had experiences that he cannot put words to when he's meditating and it's because sure. he's accessing another dimension and his consciousness is being 
ushered into that other dimension. And so that has so much implications for everything that everybody does. And so when I look at these guys, I'm like, holy shit, this is, there's a lot of crazy shit going on here. For sure. Um, okay. So there you go. Um, I really, really like this song a lot. I love the concept. And uh, I'm going to give this one a 9.2. I really, really like this. The 9.8 for me. <clears throat> 9.8. Okay. We are coming right back with more music. Very, 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 very good stuff. Okay, guys. We shall return. Thin out. Sorry, out. Gone.